does a small European nation manage to be so incredibly efficient in so many aspects of life? In the next few minutes, we're going to unravel 10 mind-blowing facts about the Netherlands that will keep you on the edge of your seat. You'll not only understand why the Netherlands is renowned for its efficiency, but also discover a little-known Dutch habit that might just change the way you think about modern life. So, are the Dutch really the true champions of efficiency? Let's find out. Number one, the Netherlands has many thousands of dikes. Why? Because it's nestled against the North Sea, and where natural dunes can't do the job, the Dutch take matters into their own hands. These mighty walls, known as dikes, safeguard their farms and communities. Remarkably, around half of the Dutch people and land sit below sea level. Dikes are no recent invention. The Dutch started crafting them back in the 1200s. What's intriguing is that the term dike itself is Dutch, originally meaning the bank of a body of water. In 1916, a disastrous flood left a lasting mark, prompting the Dutch to take an audacious step. They erected a colossal dike, a whopping 20 miles long, sealing off part of the treacherous Zuiderzee an inlet from the North Sea. The Zuiderzee Dyke, completed in 1932, brought forth the Isla Mir, the largest freshwater lake in Western Europe. It's a testament to the Dutch's mastery over water. But here's where things get even more intriguing. The Dutch don't just build dikes, they also make room for water when the need arises. They deliberately let water submerge certain areas to shield the rest. This might be ocean or river water, this strategy, known as room for water, is a dynamic approach to managing nature's forces. A forward-thinking approach that has proven to be a game-changer, showcasing their mastery in balancing the relentless forces of nature with their innovative solutions. Number 2. Did you know that the Netherlands is the world's largest flower exporter? It's a fact that might surprise you, but when you look at the numbers, it all starts to make sense. In Europe, Dutch exports make up over 80% of all EU flower exports, a staggering majority. But not a coincidence. In 2021, the value of tulip bulb exports alone surpassed an astonishing 250 million euros. That's a lot of tulip bulbs. And they're sent to flower enthusiasts all around the globe. So what's their secret? It's all about the Dutch soil. The Netherlands has the ideal soil for bulb production, and it's this natural advantage that allows the nation to thrive in the flower business. With this fertile land, Dutch growers can achieve these remarkable numbers in flower production. To put this into perspective, the Netherlands ships out nearly 2.5 billion tulip bulbs to other countries every single year. That's an impressive feat by any measure, and a testament to the Dutch's expertise in the floral field. It's not just about tulips. It's also the daffodils, hyacinths, and a whole bouquet of breathtaking blooms that the Dutch send across the globe. So, when you receive a bouquet of fresh Dutch flowers or bulbs, you're not just getting a simple gift. You're holding a piece of Dutch efficiency, carefully cultivated, and delivered with precision. The Dutch have rightfully earned the title of the flower shop of the world, and their green fingers are something to admire. The Netherlands' ability to cultivate and export such vast quantities of flowers is proof of its impeccable logistics and organization. They fine-tune the entire process to ensure that the world gets to enjoy the beauty of Dutch flowers, and they do it with remarkable efficiency. Now let's rewind a bit and travel back in time to a period where tulips took on a whole new meaning in this nation. Number 3. The Netherlands Once Experienced Tulip Mania It was a wild and fascinating chapter in Dutch history that unfolded during the 17th century, a period known as the Dutch Golden Age. Tulips, those colorful, delicate flowers, were introduced into Europe from Turkey. They quickly became a sensation, a symbol of luxury and status. People couldn't get enough of them, and the demand for rare varieties of tulips began to exceed the supply. Prizes for these prize bulbs started to skyrocket. By the early 17th century, a single bulb of a new variety could be considered a dowry for a bride. In fact, there's a famous story of a thriving brewery in France being exchanged for a single bulb of the variety Tulip Brasserie. That's the kind of frenzy we're talking about. But like all good things, a craze couldn't last forever. In 1637, doubt began to creep in. People wondered if tulip prices could keep climbing. Almost overnight, the tulip market crashed. The price structure crumbled, leaving behind a trail of financial ruin for many ordinary Dutch families. It's a lesson about the Dutch ability to adapt and innovate, even in the face of a speculative bubble. They didn't just bounce back from the tulip mania, they thrived. Number 4. Dutch calmly paid their own part of the bill in a restaurant This is a cultural norm in the Netherlands that might surprise anyone who comes from a different background. In many places, it's customary for the guests to cover the cost of food and drinks, especially during a birthday celebration. You know, to treat the birthday boy or girl. But in the Netherlands, things take a different turn. 
Dutch folks have this unique approach where they tend to pay for themselves and even for everyone else when they invite people to celebrate their special day. In fact, it's not just about the bill. Dutch birthday celebrations often come with an unexpected twist. People tend to bring their own cake to their birthdays. It's a tradition deeply rooted in the Dutch culture of equality and fairness. Everyone is treated equally, and this extends to the dining table as well. It's not just about birthdays either. This approach seeps into everyday dining experiences. If two people go out for a meal and both have an equally enjoyable time, they typically split the bill right down the middle. Yes, it's that simple and fair. Perhaps you've even heard the phrase, go Dutch? Well, this might just be where it originated from. This culture of equitable payment and shared experiences. It's a fascinating insight into how the Dutch maintain their sense of fairness and equality, even in the seemingly small acts of everyday life. This kind of shared responsibility ensures a harmonious dining experience, where everyone feels equally valued and respected. Before the next incredible fact, if you've enjoyed this journey through the Netherlands, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. That way you won't miss out on any future videos. Now let's talk about something interesting and perhaps a bit unusual when it comes to Dutch efficiency. Number five, the Dutch tend to disregard lines. It's a bit of a quirk, but somehow it ties back to their efficiency. How so you ask? Well, let's unpack this intriguing aspect of Dutch culture. With forming queues, the Dutch do it in the most well obstructive manner possible. Take cash machines, for example. Instead of forming a neat sideways queue along the bank wall, they might stretch outwards, directly facing the ATM. It can block pathways, bike paths, roads, or even motorways. Picture it like a zigzag of impatience, right in the middle of everything. But this habit of disregarding lines might not be about rudeness or a lack of manners. It could just be that the Dutch are always in a hurry, eager to get back to their productive lives. Maybe their fast-paced lifestyle doesn't leave much time for orderly cues. Who knows? It's a unique cultural quirk that adds a touch of spontaneity to the Dutch way of life. Number six, Amsterdam is over 1,200 bridges. These bridges are more than just structures. They're icons of the city, each with its unique character. Amsterdam's network of 1,281 bridges beautifully weaves its way across the city's 165 canals. Some of these bridges are steeped in history, while others are adorned with vibrant flowers, creating a visual feat for anyone lucky enough to cross them. Some bridges even put on a dazzling light show at night, adding a touch of magic to the sky. One spot in Amsterdam allows you to feast your eyes on not one, but two, but 15 bridges at once. Just head to the Rugelergash and Hergengrash bridges and you'll be treated to a view that's nothing short of breathtaking. Now let's talk about a bridge with a story to tell. Tordeleu's Bridge, also known as Tower Bridge, is perhaps the most famous and one of the oldest and widest bridges in Amsterdam. Named after the watchtower that once stood in its center, the tower may be gone, but the bridge continues to be a beloved gathering point. On a sunny summer day, there's no better place to sit and enjoy a refreshing drink. The arches that give this bridge its strength are as Amsterdam-esque as it gets. They're the kind of architecture that makes you think, this can only be Amsterdam. But here's the twist, it's wider than three regular bridges combined. That's one impressive bridge. But there's more to this story. Beneath this magnificent bridge lies several cells that were once used to detain some of Amsterdam's notorious criminals. This bridge has a hidden history of its own, a testament to the city's intriguing past. So the next time you stroll along Amsterdam's enchanting canals, take a moment to appreciate the intricate beauty of these bridges each one a testament to the city's rich cultural heritage. Number seven, the Drie Gezutzer in the Netherlands is the biggest pub in Europe. The Drie Gezutzer, or in English, the Three Sisters, is not just any pub. It's the largest one in all of Europe. This grand cafe stands proudly on the south side of Groningen's bustling Grote Markt, the city's main square, just a stone's throw away from the iconic Martini Tower and the city hall. But what sets this place apart isn't just its prime location. De Drie Gezutz is a complex comprised of four interconnected buildings with five entrances inside. You'll be met with around 20 bars, each pouring the finest Dutch beers. And if that's not enough to wet your whistle, there are several dance floors, each offering a unique genre of music. From folk traditional to techno, from pop to Latin American rhythms, it's a music lover's paradise. But here's where Dutch efficiency truly shines. The grand establishment can accommodate a staggering 3,750 people at once. It's like a mini village of revelry right in the heart of Grotingen. This is where you see the Netherlands knack for organizing and managing even the wildest of parties with ease. During the morning and afternoon, it transforms into a delightful restaurant, a perfect spot to savor a cup of coffee while enjoying some tunes. The authenticity, cozy seating areas, and friendly staff make you feel right at home in Grotingen. 
Whether it's for a coffee break, a scrumptious lunch, a cozy dinner, or simply to soak in the vibrant atmosphere with your favorite drink, the Drie Gutsus is always bustling with locals and tourists alike. It's a testament to the Dutch efficiency that they can seemingly shift from a quiet morning coffee spot to a buzzing evening pub without missing a beat. Number 8. The Netherlands was the first country to legalize same-sex marriage. In 2001, the Netherlands made history by becoming the first country in the world to legalize same-sex marriage. This is where Dutch efficiency meets the celebration of love, setting a global precedent. On the stroke of midnight, April 1st, 2001, in a ceremony led by the then mayor of Amsterdam, Job Cohen, four couples embarked on a new chapter of their lives. They tied the knot and in doing so, they helped change the world. The Netherlands showed the world that love knows no boundaries, and their efficient approach to making this happen was nothing short of groundbreaking. But it didn't stop there. Since that historic moment, more than 15,000 same-sex couples have celebrated their love through marriage in the Netherlands. The impact of this decision has resonated far beyond Dutch borders, inspiring change in many other countries. Today, same-sex marriage is possible in nine other countries, following the trailblazing example set by the Netherlands. This is where Dutch efficiency takes on a new dimension in fostering equality, inclusivity, and love, demonstrating the power of an efficient, forward-thinking society. The celebration of this milestone isn't limited to that one fateful night in 2001. The city of Amsterdam, in its unique and vibrant way, commemorates this event year after year. You can walk the rainbow walk of historic LGBT plus sites, a testament to the progress made in terms of inclusivity and love. The iconic Wester Church proudly flies a large rainbow flag, a symbol of unity and acceptance. And there are online symposiums where voices come together to celebrate love in all its forms. Efficiency isn't always about numbers, logistics, or systems. Sometimes it's about compassion and progress, making strides towards a more inclusive and equal society. Number 9. Each year on April 27th, the entire country turns orange. It's a day like no other, and it's all for a reason. King's Day, a magnificent celebration of the King's birthday. This grand festivity is renowned for being one of the biggest and most colorful celebrations in the Netherlands, and Amsterdam in particular, takes it to another level. You might wonder, why orange? Well, orange is the color of the Dutch royal family, which belongs to the House of Orange. This is where Dutch efficiency meets a zest for life and tradition. On King's Day, the Dutch nation unites to honor their king, and you'll find every nook and cranny of the country filled with lively orange decorations, clothing, and activities. It's as if the whole nation collectively decides to hit the colorized button on their lives for a day. But it's not just on King's Day. Orange is a hue that resonates deeply with the Dutch. It's not only the color of their royals, but also the nickname of the Dutch national soccer team. Whenever and wherever the Dutch soccer team plays, they're followed by the spirited army of sports fans known as the Orange Legion. These ardent supporters have been known to turn stadiums, streets, and bars into vibrant shades of orange. They're not just spectators, they're participants in the game, turning local campgrounds into Camp Orange. And when possible, these fans march en masse from a central location to the stadium, creating an electrifying atmosphere regardless of the outcome. Win or lose, Netherlands soccer fans are famous for supporting the Orange teams positively and energetically. It's a dazzling display of unity, patriotism, and you guessed it, Dutch efficiency. This love for orange isn't just a symbol, it's a way of life for the Dutch, and a testament to their ability to bring people together, celebrate, and officially organize grand events that resonate with the entire nation. And finally, to the Dutch habit we've been eagerly waiting to share, number 10. There are more bicycles in the Netherlands than there are people, earning this country the well-deserved title of the Land of Bicycles. In the Netherlands, there are approximately 23 million bicycles, including about 2.4 million e-bikes. That's more bicycles than there are people. It's a staggering statistics, translating to an average of 1.3 bicycles per person in the Netherlands. If that's not enough, there are about 680 bikes for every square kilometer. In fact, data has shown that around 2.3% of the world's bicycles call the Netherlands home. Now that's what we call a cycling nation. It's not just about city streets. In the Dutch countryside, a growing network of routes connects the country's villages, towns, and cities. Some of these paths are part of the Dutch National Cycle Network, a remarkable system of routes for bicycle tourism that reaches every corner of the nation. And if you take a stroll through any Dutch city, you'll quickly realize just how ubiquitous bicycles are. It's not uncommon to witness Dutch authorities using giant magnets to pull bicycles out of canals, emphasizing just how many bikes end up in the Dutch waterways. It's a peculiar sight, but it underlines the sheer scale of cycling in the Netherlands. Cycling didn't become popular in the Netherlands as early as in the United States or Britain, which saw their bike booms in the 1880s. However, by the 1890s, the Dutch were already laying in the foundation with dedicated paths for cyclists. 
By 1911, the Dutch owned more bicycles per capita than any other European country. The Dutch start young, training their children to ride confidently on the roads at around 12 years old, just before they begin secondary school. They instill a culture of cycling that extends through generations, reducing their ecological footprint and helping the environment. Cycling isn't just about getting from point A to point B. It's a conscious choice that benefits society as a whole. And here's the incredible part. Cycling in the Netherlands prevents approximately 6,500 deaths each year, and it adds half a year to the life expectancy of the Dutch people. So, as you can see, it's not just about having more bikes than people. It's about how the Dutch harness this incredible resource to create a cleaner, healthier, and more efficient society. And there you have it, folks. The Netherlands, a country that effortlessly embodies the true essence of efficiency in every aspect of its being. From their innovative approach to flower exports to leading the way in progressive social movements, the Dutch have truly set the bar high. We hope you've enjoyed this journey through the wonders of the Netherlands. Thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in to our next exciting video.